about pre-evangelism. You know, it's kind of interesting in light of that is that they say this, Jesus didn't teach hate. Jesus washed feet. And I've heard uh, Ed Stetzer, who's a scholar and, you know, kind of public Christian personality that I've heard a lot. He's kind of one of the consultants on this campaign. And so the fact that he supports it, that caused me to listen a little more closely. But he nevertheless is trying to say, this isn't for Christians. This is trying just to get people in the door. This is pre-evangelism. And that that, that term keeps, keeps being used. But who's to say that foot washing is something culturally that anyone who's not a Christian could understand? Like, yeah. I, what what's that supposed to mean to anybody? It's a deeply religious, biblical idea in general. And, and I think it it assumes kind of some sort of haunted biblical culture or biblical understanding behind it. And it probably just means, oh, he it's acceptance. Foot washing is total acceptance. And is interesting parallel with, uh, I, Robert, I appreciate you bringing up the fact that there there's a connection here uh, ideologically between what's happening with um, the move towards embracing people's attendance and participation in same-sex weddings or transgender weddings and that kind of thing. I think there it's like, oh, well, we just have to do what we can to get our foot in the door and then we can bring them along. And I've seen this with the marketing firm that's involved with this. Um, the marketing firm Lerma is also the firm that currently, and then the leaders in it were with a fir former firm that led the Salvation Army's efforts for the their branding promise, doing the most good, which a lot of people within the Salvation Army who see it as their ecclesial home resisted because it felt like it was taking Jesus out of the mission. What are we being saved from? Now, if you're really going to do the most good, you're going to be concerned about somebody's eternal soul and you're going to tell them everything that Robert said passionately that there's a judge who's coming and we want the ultimate good for that person. But instead, what's what's come and what the messaging behind doing the most good is, is very similar to what we have here. There's a reluctance to stand up against anything that moves against the sacraments of the left for fear, because after all, we want to win them. We want to win them. We don't want to offend them. Please don't be offended. And so if that ends up being the case that's being made, I see this consistent message. And it might just be with a couple of people. So I'm interested, uh, might, well, a, a couple of groups that are asserting this message altogether. So I'm interested, Is the, is help, help me understand, pre-evangelism, is that a thing? And if it is, Robert, um, what would be involved with pre-evangelism? If one, somebody wants to know about pre-evangelism, they should start with Paul's magisterial letter to the Romans. Pre-evangelism for Paul in that shows demonstrating that all that people are in big trouble, Jews and Gentiles alike, yeah. because they have intentionally suppressed the truth about God accessible to them in even the material structures of creation, even if they don't have the direct revelation of scripture or don't accept it even from the way in which god makes things people ought to know from the clues that god provides to everybody in the world that they are doing things that are problematic for a relationship with the one true real god that's pre-evangelism focusing on sin focusing on the need that people have to receive jesus you can't just start with repent and believe in the gospel in a culture like this, which has no understanding of personal sin. In fact, I've been at theological institutions, not the current one that I'm in or the one that I will be in, 